Hello viewers, I welcome you all for this today's session, Analysis of Stopping Side Distance on Plain Ground. I am Ashok Kumar, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Walchand Institute Technology, Solapur. The learning outcome of the today's session, at the end of the lecture, students will be able to analyze and calculate the stopping side distance on, uh, stopping side distance on plain ground. Before we go into the uh, analysis, let us understand what is stopping side distance. It is the minimum side distance available on a highway at any spot having a sufficient length to enable the driver to stop the vehicle traveling at a design speed safely without any collision with any other obstruction. So here you can see, take the three cases to understand the stopping side distance. It is a just distance available for any driver in front of him to take a proper action before the meeting the any object or uh, any uh, vehicle without having any collision. So considering the uh, this uh, the particular uh, uh, location where the vehicle negotiating on horizontal curve, here you can see that the sight line is restricted by the corner of the obstruction. Because of the obstruction, uh, the sight line of the both drivers got reduced. So now what happened over here, the sight line is restricted and because of that, the distance between these two vehicles are going to be lesser. So by the point, uh, the, there might be an accident because of the shorter distance and driver unable to take in any action in this first instant. Coming into the vertical curve here, the vehicle which is coming on the uh, summit curve uh, should be able to see the opposite vehicle well in advance or it may be any object or any pedestrian is causing anything that should be uh, seen well in advance. Over here also, because of the topography of the uh, this uh, summit curve, if the topography kept very uh, vertical, so in this case, the distance between the object and the driver will be very, very shorter. So that will again they reduces the side distance. In the third case, you can understand the, the vehicle negotiating on the main road and one vehicle coming on the cross road. And here you can see the uh, the both the vehicles should see the each other that is the the vehicle from the main road also should see the uh, the vehicle coming from the cross road the both line this is the sight line of the uh, both the driver this sight line is obstructed due to the corner obstructions of like uh, any uh, the building or any advertisement board because of this obstruction at the corner of the intersection the sight line has uh, restricted the both the driver and because of that both are unable to see over each other. So might be they are coming very closer over here at the intersection then they were able to see the both the vehicles. So by the time the distance left out in front of the driver will be very very shorter. So for any designing the whether it may be horizontal curve or vertical curve or intersection you must ensure yourself the there is an along the alignment you should have a proper uh, side distance so that the the distance available in front of the driver is sufficient to take a proper action as soon as he perceives the any opposite vehicle or any pedestrian is crossing or animal is crossing whatever so the distance should be sufficient for him to take an action now uh, with this uh, background let us understand the uh, how we are going to find out this uh, stopping side distance uh, this stopping side distance is the distance uh, some of the uh, the lag distance and the braking distance. So adding the lag distance and braking distance, we can get the what is the stopping side distance. First we'll calculate the uh, lag distance, then we'll go for calculating the braking side distance. Braking distance. So lag distance is uh, whenever the the vehicle uh, coming at a particular speed, and uh, as soon as the uh, the driver perceives the any object over here. So there is an object is coming or then is a pedestrian is crossing and vehicle is coming at that. So now as soon as he perceives this, uh, the object and whatever the uh, the time elapsed between the uh, not, uh, perceiving the object that is during the reaction time of the driver, whatever the driver uh, the takes the time to go into this uh, traveling during the reaction time t. So that is a distance we call as a lag distance. So here uh, it is a distance the vehicle traveled during the reaction time t. So here the uh, action is not taken just his thinking process whatever the distance traveled in the during the thinking process that we call as the distance over here that is the d1 distance or you can say that is the distance of the lag distance. So once he uh, decides that the action to be taken the from here after reaching to the distance d1 he will apply the brake 
or he takes the action so after application of the brake uh, the again the further vehicle will go for a skidding so that the distance is called as a braking distance that is a d2 so your stopping side distance is equal to d1 plus d2 that is lag distance plus your uh, braking distance so lag distance we know that the vehicle is coming up with the a particular speed uh, here we know that the v and the reaction time t we can get the what is the lag distance here if it is in meter per second it is a uh, speed multiplied by the reaction time t okay so now t is usually taken as as per the suggestion of the irc we take the t value as a 2.5 second that is the reaction time of the driver is 2.5 second and if you want to convert into uh, kmph uh, we have to convert that into meter per second to kmph that is uh, dividing by 1000 again dividing by 1000 into uh, dividing by 60 into 60 that is conversion of meter into kilometer and uh, conversion of second into minute and minute into hours so this is how we calculate the uh, conversion of meter per second into kmph that is 1 by 3.6 or uh, 0.278 just multiply the uh, this value of vt into 0.278 you will get the uh, the v value in kmph so now the lag distance in uh, where v in kmph it is 0.278 v into t here v is in kmph now you pass over here and try to answer this question uh, the value of f decreases with increase in speed that is true or false and higher the speed uh, higher will be the stopping side distance now you can think for a, a while and try to give the answer for this question i hope you are uh, able to give the answer for this question the correct answer is the the value of f decreases with increase in speed because uh, it is coming with uh, a certain design speed so during the uh, if the speed is higher uh, you need to have uh, the f value will be decreases with uh, increase in the speed now uh, we know that the uh, for the higher the uh, the speed you need to take more longer distance to stop the vehicle so again it is uh, true in this case also now we will go for calculating the your uh, braking distance that is after the application of the brake how we are going to calculate the your braking distance so now it is the distance traveled by the vehicle after the application of the brake so for a level road it is obtained uh, equate this uh, the work done in stopping the vehicle and the kinetic energy of the vehicle so vehicle is coming up with a certain uh, momentum now the the opposite vehicle the opposite uh, the the force which is applied now you equate the uh, one which is coming in the direction and which is opposing the this uh, the uh, your movement you can equate these two forces you can get the what is the braking distance here so now uh, here the work done against the friction force so here the the friction force in stopping the vehicle is uh, f into l or wfl so whatever the friction force is uh, w into f into l where the uh, w is the weight of the vehicle and f is the longitudinal friction and l is the your uh, the uh, braking distance and uh, this the this momentum we know that uh, it is the kinetic energy it is in this direction we got the kinetic energy and opposite of the kinetic energy is nothing but your friction force now you equate this uh, kinetic energy and friction force to get then uh, the distance of your uh, l value here the kinetic energy is uh, given as half m e square uh, they were uh, v in uh, meter per second now this is your friction force and uh, this is your kinetic energy equate this kinetic energy and friction force it is a wfl into w square by 2g here w will get cancelled on both the side and the remaining is l equal to v square by 2gf where f is nothing but your uh, longitudinal coefficient of friction here v is in meter per second so total ssd equal to lag distance plus uh, braking distance and uh, we know that uh, the lag distance is v into t and braking distance is v square by 2gf where v in meter per second now uh, you want to give the conversion of uh, equation to meter per second into kmph we know that it is a conversion of uh, 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 multiplying by 0.278 you can get the uh, conversion from uh, meter per second into kmph so now conversion of uh, the this one the 2gf here how we are going to put that put the g value as 9.81 and uh, multiply by 2 you can get the uh, the uh, how i got this uh, 254f this is the explanation over here that is uh, uh, multiply by 0.278 square here in the numerator you have to multiply 0.278 to convert into uh, meter per second into your uh, kmph so this is 0.278 square uh, divided by 2 into 9.81 put the g value as 9.81 
that comes uh, 0 0.03 so you can simplify further 1 by 0 0.03 it will get the value of 254 f now uh, the as per the codal provision you can take the depending upon the speed of the vehicle you can take the f value as uh, 0 0.4 0 0.38 for more than 80 kmph we take the f value as 0.35 now we'll solve the, the simple numerical over here uh, it is the uh, the uh, two cars are approaching in opposite direction the speed of the two cars is 90 kmph and 60 kmph and the coefficient of longitudinal friction is given as uh, 0 0.7 and the brake efficiency is uh, 50 percent in the both the case so now because the brake efficiency is uh, 50 percent i have to multiply this uh, 0.7 by 0.5 to get the the value of your f so i got the f value as uh, 0 0.5 uh, into 0 0.7 so i get the f value as 0.35 now you uh, calculate the your stopping side distance for car one that is uh, uh, Vt plus V square by 2Gf, uh, the, both the values are given in kmph, you have to convert into meter per second first. So, dividing by 3.6 or multiplying by 0.278, whatever you can do it. But here I got uh, dividing by 3.6, uh, uh, the value for uh, car 1 is uh, 25 meter per second and car 2 is uh, the 16.67 meter per second. Now, you put the, the V1 that is for car 1, the side distance is uh, 153.6 and for car 2 it is 82.2 meter now you to get the total side distance you have to uh, add both the sd1 of car 1 and sd1 of car 2 so total it becomes approximately it becomes 236 meter is the total side dis uh, uh, total your uh, stopping side distance on the road these are the references i have used for uh, preparing this uh, presentation thank you